Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today I bring you the most requested subwoofer ever on this channel, the REL S510. Finally got my hands on one, it took a while. They got a lot of subwoofers, guys, and it took time to work my way up, if you will. So we finally have gotten here, and I'm excited to tell you guys about this thing. So let me go ahead and get those main specs on screen. I'm gonna tell you about some specs and standout features that I think are cool. I'll tell you what the subwoofer sounds like, how it compares to some other subwoofers in and around this price, and what you can expect if you're coming from something like a T7X or a T9X, because most of the time when I was talking to you guys in the comments and you were asking me to review the S510, it's because you were considering it as an upgrade from your T9X or your T7X or something like that, so we'll get into that also. Let me tell you about these standout features. First, you get eight coats of beautiful gloss black. Uh, there's a ton of depth to this black finish. You see it in person and it just, it looks fantastic. Nice little recessed grab handles. Uh, th that's a genius design feature. It makes moving this thing around really easy. It does weigh about 70 pounds, so it is appreciated. 10 inch driver up front. It is an aluminum cone and it has carbon fiber on the backside of the driver to help bring more rigidity, more rigidity to the design because the driver needs it with how much extension this thing is capable of. You also have a 12 inch down firing passive radiator. The top has a beautiful rail logo finish in what looks to be brushed stainless steel. Around back you have a pair of RCA inputs as well as LFE and rails high level connection. Um, and you can daisy link this thing. This is the smallest subwoofer rail offers that you can run as a stack. So if you wanted to run six of these bad boys, three on each side of your stereo or theater, you could do that and um, that would be freaking awesome. So, I think that rounds out the standout features. Let me tell you, before I tell you what it sounds like, let me tell you what I was expecting and then I'll tell you what I got. So, if you've seen my other reviews of REL subwoofers, I've done 12 other ones so far, this is lucky number 13, you'll have heard me say, uh, you know, just talk about that that good, that high SQ design they have, you know, just bass that comes from an ink black background, good handling of delicate passages, really good transients, fantastic note to note distinction, just overall fantastic bass fidelity. I've called the T9X just world class in terms of bass quality. I expected the S510 to just give us that same level of bass quality, um, be able to play louder and extend lower, and I figured that would be about it. And for as good as the T9X sounds, I figured that would justify the price of $28.99, which isn't nothing, but I was like, geez, if they can get that same level of quality and just give us more force down low, that would make it worth it. And that is not what happened. Um, that is not what I got. Look, the S510 can play louder than the T9X and it can get a lot lower. Um, but what shocked me the most was the level of transience I was experiencing in the lower frequency. So, and wh what I mean by that is, you know, some people may just hear that word and think I'm talking about how quick the sub is. No, it, it's about the change in shifts in, in the bass, right? Like some songs, the bass might you know, be a little bit lower than kind of creep up and maybe go back down. It basically, it changes, right? Especially if you listen to something like EDM, there's a lot of shifts in those frequencies. In the lower frequencies between say 20 and 35 Hertz, I was hearing transients that I didn't even know were in the song. I had no idea. And I've got a ton of subs here that are absolutely fantastic. But the S510 was showing me tonal shifts in frequencies and transients and changes in amplitudes that I didn't know were there in those really, really low frequencies. And here's something a lot of you guys might not know is, the lower the frequency gets, the the uh, less the human ear can really pick up on the differences, right? So um, this is a serious accomplishment that REL was able to develop this subwoofer in a way that we can, we can hear those transients, we can hear those shifts in amplitudes, those minor changes in frequency, you know, between say 20 and 35 hertz. Those are really, really low frequencies. And this subwoofer does it with a tremendous amount of force that you feel in your chest and your whole body, yet it's still so easy on the ears because of the level of refinement they bring to the table with the way they produce bass. That's something I really love about REL and that's why I consider them an SQ brand. 
talked about this a bunch of times in other videos, but um, you know, RHEL is an SQ subwoofer. That's a sound quality subwoofer. And then there's SPL subwoofers. SPL subwoofers are generally gonna sound a lot heavier on the ears. Um, and I love that this still remains so light on the ears, but is so incredibly forceful on your body. Some other things that did better than the T9X were all those other areas where we describe bass fidelity. There was a little bit more definition in the leading edges. The note to note distinction was notably clearer. And again, I did not think there was another level of improvement that could be had in those areas. The handling of delicate passages was just ever so slightly better. Um, and the sense of scale, that wasn't just a little better, that was tremendously better. I never thought the T9X sounded small, despite it being a small to medium sized subwoofer. And the S510 is not substantially larger physically, but the sense of scale is tremendously larger than a single T9X. The sense of scale the S510 brings to the table is more in line with what you would get out of a pair of T9Xs or a single Predator 1510. And I'm not exaggerating, this is not hyperbole. I really mean that. Most subwoofers sound about their physical size. A giant subwoofer like the RSL Speedwoofer 12S sounds like a giant subwoofer with a massive sense of scale because it is. And something really small like an SVS Micro 3000, I mean, it'll play loud, don't get me wrong, it'll, it's, it's a great sub, but you know that bass is coming out of a much smaller form factor. Where the S510, it just, it kind of shatters that. It, the S510 is just like, I identify as being physically twice my size. Because the, the, the sense of scale is substantially larger than I'm used to hearing out of a cabinet this size. Again, more in line with the Predator 1510 or a pair of T9Xs. So absolutely incredible. So um, let me talk about tonality real quick. Some of you guys might not know this, but tonality is a thing with bass. Just like some speakers might be analytical, right? Or some speakers might be warm or some speakers might be tonally neutral. Subwoofers have a tone as well. And I'll tell you like this, RHEL's Series HT is gonna be mostly tonally neutral. It's not really adding any like warmth or to uh, you know anything like that, nor is it like on the very dry side of things. It's tonally very neutral. RHEL's TX range is gonna be a little bit on the warm side, right? Not tremendously, just a little bit. Um, Series S510 is, is just slightly less warm tonally than the T9X, um, but warmer than Series HT, which is tonally neutral. So I hope that makes sense for you. So if you're looking to add just that little bit of tonal goodness and tonal richness to the table in your base region, the S510 brings that, and it's a beautiful sound. Um, let me think if there's anything else as far as sound quality I wanna tell you guys about. Um, low frequency extension was incredibly good for a 10 inch. Um, this thing seriously moves some air. Um, if you're looking for that experience where like, you're not necessarily hearing a lot of bass, but on your body you're like, holy crap, this is like, I feel this weight on my chest. The S510 absolutely brings that to the table. Um, and the real miracle here is that it can do that without crushing any detail. Um, you know what I mean? And there's a lot of detail in bass. Some of you guys may not be aware of that, especially if you watch movies, because here's the, a lot of audiophiles know there's detail in bass, but the theater guys, they're, they're, sometimes they don't know that because this is what happens. Us audiophile two channel stereo guys, we, li we listen to the same song like 2000 times because the song is only about three minutes, but the home theater guys, even if they love a movie, maybe they watch it five times, right? Movies two hours, two and a half hours. So the, the theater guys are not gonna be as aware of where the bass is and just so intimately familiar with the entire bass track of a two and a half hour film because it's much harder to be familiar with that. Whereas being a two channel stereo guy, it's really easy to be intimately familiar with a three minute track. But guys, movies have a lot of bass detail in them. So uh, yeah, don't don't assume they don't. What else, what else? Um, is it time for comparisons? I think it's time for comparisons. Um, actually, let me answer a couple of questions you guys might have. So let's say you have a pair of T7Xs or T9Xs and you're like, should I, should I upgrade to the S510? Is it worth it? Yeah, yeah, I definitely think it's worth it. Um, if, you're, if you're just getting into a subwoofer, 
and you kind of noticed a pair of T9Xs and a single S510 cost the same and you're not sure which way to go, I would say shoot Rella email, tell them what kind of speakers you're using, what your room dimensions are, and they'll help, uh, you know, kind of point you in the right direction because it, it does matter uh, a little bit, the room dimensions and the speakers you're using and such. But um, if the S510 is an option for you and you have the pockets to afford it, I can't think of a reason not to get it. Um, it is absolutely fantastic. Uh, again, uh, for someone like me who's reviewed more subwoofers on the YouTube platform than just about anyone, and someone that's most likely reviewed more REL subwoofers than just about anyone, um, it, it, it's a shock to me to hear detail, fidelity, or transients that I haven't heard before. I have listened to these same songs thousands of times on at least 100 subwoofers. Um, I, I thought that I had heard everything there was to hear. And you know, let me touch on this thing called diminishing return that some people talk about. I, I have not experienced it yet in my audiophile journey. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm just saying I haven't run into it yet. So far, every time the price goes up, the performance goes up. Now, that's not to say there's expensive products out there that are probably just overpriced. I'm sure those products exist. But likewise, they're products that are worth every single penny they cost. And the S510 is one of them in my book. On to those comparisons. I know you guys love to hear those. Um, I've already kind of compared it to the T T9X, so we'll skip that. Um, let's talk about, let's just jump into another brand comparison. You know what, let me do the Predator. Some of you guys probably wanna know because the Predator's you know, quite large. So the Predator 1510 and the REL S510, is, in terms of sense of scale, they both have an absolutely massive sense of scale. The Predator 1510 being just notably larger, is gonna be able to place lower frequencies a little bit louder and just overall play louder, right? That's what we can expect from a much larger subwoofer. The Predator 1510 um, tonally is more neutral. The S510 is gonna be ever so slightly warm. As far as bass detail and fidelity goes, the S510 has quite a bit more detail in the leading edges and a little bit, quite a bit better actually handling of delicate passages. But the Predator 1510 is no slouch and has been one of the best larger subwoofers I've heard in terms of sound quality. Overall, the S510 just does kick it up a notch and take it to another level. It is $1,000 more, so that's no surprise. Now, enough talking about REL, let's talk about some other brands and how they compare. Now, the, truthfully, there's not gonna be a lot of comparisons here because the reality is I don't have a lot of um, subwoofers I can compare this to. I, I just don't. Um, let's talk about the JL Audio E110. That's about 2,500 bucks. This is about 2,900. So while they're not exactly the same, they're similar in price and they're both uh, compact 10 inch subwoofers that are, you know, not, not, not cheap. Um, both have incredible cabinets, you know, both have very serious drivers that have a lot of R&D put into them. Uh, both have very strong amplifiers that are capable of delivering a lot of current to their drivers. But the two subwoofers are wildly different, wildly different. The REL S510 is the SQ sub. It's gonna be extremely forceful, but very light on the ears, and it's gonna give you a lot of bass detail. It's gonna integrate perfectly. Bass is gonna, gonna, gonna come from an ink black background. The JL Audio E110 is so different tonally. It's extremely heavy. It's heavy handed. It's heavy with its forcefulness. It's more aggressive. You're gonna feel more weight and pressure on your ears. If you're into that, you might enjoy that. It is gonna crush some detail compared to the S510. It is gonna have very good um, note to note distinction and clarity in its leading edges, but not on the same level of the S510. The JL Audio E110 is gonna draw a little bit more of your attention. It's gonna integrate well in your system, though not quite as well as the S510. Like I would not say uh, E110 sounds like it's coming from an ink black background. Uh, even if it does integrate well with your speakers, you like when the bass comes on from an E110, you know there's a subwoofer there doing that, whereas with an S510, it's coming from an ink black background. There's no difference between like speakers and subwoofer. You could just close your eyes and imagine you have speakers from floor to ceiling producing just a sound that is coming from one place in an incredibly beautiful way. So very, very different sounds. I've, I've done a whole video on the difference between SQ subs and SPL subs. And I'll leave a link to that video below if you want to check that out. But JL Audio and REL are in just incredibly different subwoofers. You should not cross-shop them. If you're cross-shopping them, you don't 
know enough about your personal taste yet. And I strongly encourage you to demo both of them if you are cross shopping them for some reason. Cross shopping a JL Audio and a uh, RHEL subwoofer, let me think about it. it. You know, it would be the same as if you were cross shopping, you know, um, let's say you were getting your house painted and you were considering painting it neon green or, you know, a nice neutral cream white color. Just wildly different, you know what I mean? If you're considering those two wildly different colors to paint your house, you're probably not quite ready to paint your house because those are two totally different directions to go in. I digress. Um, let me think what else I can talk about here. I don't think it makes sense to do a rhythmic comparison because rhythmic doesn't have a 10 inch subwoofer. Um, but I feel like someone's going to ask in the comments how it compares to one of their larger subs. I don't think that makes sense, but I'll give you kind of like a quick takeaway. Um, Rhythmic and Rel don't have much crossover. The only crossover I see is like between the L12 and the 1205 Mark II. Outside of that, they're very different sizes, very different price points, and aesthetically quite different as well with Rhythmic being more the Spartan look and Rel being more the stylized look. But I know someone's going to ask me about the E15 HP2, so let's just cover that real quick. The E15 HP2 is coming in, I believe, I haven't checked its price recently, but I think it's just under $2,000. You're getting a 15 inch driver, so it's gonna be more like the Predator 1510 in terms of its like specs and things like that. The E15 HP2, of course, being a large 15 inch driver, it's gonna extend lower than the S510, and it's gonna play louder. I mean, it's, it's a 100 pound 15 inch subwoofer, that's no surprise there. Both subwoofers have excellent sound quality, but the S510 starts to take the edge here, and this is this is something that surprised me, because when I heard the Rhythmic E15 HP2, it was very similar to my experience with the Rel T9X. I didn't think there was a better level available in terms of transients and sound quality and handling of delicate passages and bass fidelity. The E15 HP2 sound quality is more like a T9X, but with tremendously more output and extension. The S510, I already told you where it's different from a T9X, and that's where it's different from the E15 HP2. The T9X actually has more detail in its transients. It's gonna show you more changes in amplitude and frequency. It's gonna bring that detail more to the forefront uh, in, in a way that sounds still very natural and, and integrate very well in your system. The E15 HP2 is no slouch in any of those regions. I just told you, it's about equal to a T9X in terms of sound quality, which I've described as world-class many times, so I'm not taking anything away from it. The S510 simply brings bass fidelity to the table that is above what the E15 HP2 is capable of or the REL T9X. So I'm trying to think if there's just anything else I can compare it to, but... <sighs> I didn't even want to do that comparison. I just knew someone was going to ask. Um, you know, the reality is, guys, expensive subs tend to get pretty heavy and ship on a pallet, so that's why you don't see me review a lot of them. I had the opportunity to review like a $5,000 subwoofer from another brand, but but it came on a pallet, and I, I live by myself, and, and I work full-time, so there's no way for me to receive a pallet um, and, and then store a pallet and then be able to ship the pallet back. There's no way for me to do that. I'm not home. And uh, pallet delivery isn't going to just get dropped off outside my garage. So it makes it a no-go. So there's not much else I can tell you as far as comparisons, guys. I'll leave you with this. I think some people just aren't going to believe anything I say. I, I, I think that's just the case. I think sometimes people see a high price, they see a raving review, and they just think, that's just snake oil. It's bullshit. The guy's paid to do this, which is quite jaded of you, I'll say. So I'll just give you the Pepsi challenge, man. Look, the Rel S510 is widely available. There's a ton of dealers all across the country in many countries. Go demo one if you don't believe me. Go demo one. It's not hard to do. If you're in the market and you think I'm exaggerating, go demo one. Seriously. Like, you'll understand what I mean when you demo one. And I get why some of you sometimes may think that a raving review like this might be an exaggeration because it is kind of hard to imagine like, you know what I mean? If, if you had something like a Porsche 911, which is just an incredible sports car, just absolutely incredible, right? Like it's, it's hard to imagine better from there. 
Are there cars better than the 911? Yeah, there are. There are. You know, I'm not going to give examples because every every time I do some some car some car guy like tries to like have an argument with me in the comments, and they don't realize I'm a car guy and know way more than them, and they end up just being wrong and don't want to admit it. So I want to avoid that. But yeah, absolutely love cars. Absolutely love them. Um, but yeah, look, there's levels to this shit, guys. There there just is. Um, I think this is uh coming to the end of the video. I think at this point I've told you just about everything there is to tell you about the S510. Um, it's absolutely incredible. Um, sense of scale and those transients just really, really uh, above my expectations in a way I was not prepared for. It, it is a shocker for someone like me who's heard so many subwoofer, subwoofers, who's heard so many songs so many times to hear something that I haven't heard before in the bass frequencies but that's what the S510 did for me, but it was in a way that was still natural uh, and integrated well and came from an ink black background and it's just a massive natural extension of the speakers. So that's the review. If you've got any questions or there was anything I didn't cover, ask in the comments below or ask in my free Discord. Some of you guys may not realize this, but I don't use any script. All these thoughts are just shot from the hip. This, this whole video is a freestyle, as are all my other videos. So sometimes I just, there's not, I just, I'll leave something out sometimes. It just doesn't get touched on. But like I said, that's what we got the comments section for. Um, yeah, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being patient with me. I know you guys wanted to see this video for a long time. Until next time, take care.